Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, this is for ages 12 and under for um, Wednesday, May 6th. So I'm using a microphone so you guys can hear me a little bit better. Um, so that way, I know last week it was a little low. So if we can bow our heads, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for today. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, because we're one day closer to getting back into your house. Lord God, we appreciate, Lord God, you putting us out to get our minds back on track. Lord God, get our spirits back in line with yours, Lord God. And Father, we appreciate, Lord God, the time that you have spent with us in our houses. We appreciate the time, Lord God, that you have allowed us to close our doors and just serve you, Lord God, in our houses and with our families. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you get all the praise, glory, and honor. Lord God, let it be different when we come back into your house, Lord God. Let them come with a new praise, a new shot, Lord God. This one is for you, Lord God. Let us come into your house worthy, Lord God, to be in your presence, Lord God. Lord God, and we'll be mindful and we'll be careful to give you all praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right. So for today's lesson, we will be doing how do we enter God's house part two. All right. So with this being said, um, last week we talked about um, this kind of like the introduction of, you know, how do we enter God's house? Um, what we need to do as young people in order to prepare um, to get ourselves back into the house of God because it's coming very soon. So, um, and we don't want to come back with the same mindset that, you know, we're back in the house of God and so I'm going to do the same things I used to do. I'm going to, you know, um, I'm on service, not pay attention, or I'm not, I'm going to, you know, just dilly dally on my phone during service or think about other things that, you know, really don't need to be present at that time, especially when we are in the presence of God. So we will continue, markers, we will continue on talking about how do we enter in God's house? How do we enter his house? Part two. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, because I have some points, that I'm going to write up here. I'm going to, I'm going to, write, I'm going to write the scriptures up. I'm going to write the points because I'm going to tell you what the points are. But I'm going to write the scriptures. So the first one is a mindset to receive the Holy Ghost. So if we can turn to Deuteronomy 4 and 29. So like always, every Bible study, you should have your Bible and a piece of paper. So you can um, write down and follow along. All right. So. Um, Deuteronomy 4 and 29. So, a mindset to receive. So you're, you know, in a place where you're like, I think it's time, and I think God is speaking to me, and I think something in my heart is telling me I need to get the Holy Ghost. And you need to listen to that um, because that is not something that, you know, has come out of thin air. God is trying to get your attention. So with that, a mindset to receive the Holy Ghost. So if we read Deuteronomy 4.29, it says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So your mindset should be, when I seek him, when I'm calling on his name, when I'm trying to get filled with the Holy Ghost, when God, I know God's going to fill me with the Holy Ghost, my mind my heart and my soul needs to be seeking after the Lord. And with my seeking, I will find him. And when I find him, I know, I know with me being faithful, repenting or believing, repenting, I know that God 
will do it. God will give me the, he will fill me with the Holy Ghost because I have a desire to. Let's also turn to 1 Chronicles chapter number 16, verse 11. So 1 Chronicles it is after 2 Kings. Chapter number 16. We're in the Old Testament. So Deuteronomy was in the Old Testament. Excuse me. Um, and so it's not Corinthians Chronicles. We are still in the Old Testament. So we're going to 1 Chronicles chapter number 16, verse 11. And it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. So your mindset should be when I get to the altar or when I get into a space where I feel like I, it's just me and God, I'm going to seek his face continually in those moments. Whether God's timing is to give you, to feel you now, feel you in 15 minutes, feel you in five hours, God is going to do it because his word said, his word said. And so with me seeking him, I'm going to make sure I seek his strength. I need power from God. So I'm going to seek his strength and I'm going to seek him continuously because I know I won't get distracted by the things that are in the world if I continuously seek him. So with me, with my continual worship, with my continual praise, my continual fasting, I know that I will get strength from him. All right. So let me write those two scriptures up here so you guys have them. It's going to be Deuteronomy. I'm not going to spell the whole Deuteronomy. I'm just going to um, abbreviate it. It's D. D E U Deuteronomy 4 and 29. Let me draw a line here so you guys know and I'll get out of the way. And then it's first Chronicles. First Chronicles 16 and 11. Okay, so that's kind of like the first, the first point. The second point that I'll be referring to is okay, so you want to get the Holy Ghost, but you're like, well, what? is the Holy Ghost. You're like, some, some, a lot of you guys already know what it is, but just in case for some people who don't, we're going to do a refresher. So please turn with me to John 14 and 26. Um, if you need to pause the video and write these scriptures down, please go ahead. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go to John 14 and 26. So we have a passion to receive the Holy Ghost. So, what am I receiving? John 14, not 1st, 2nd John, it's just St. John. So, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. All right, John chapter number 14, verse 26. Okay, and it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So we simply read here that the Holy Ghost is a comforter and whom the Father will send in my name. This is Jesus talking. He's going to send in Jesus' name. So I'm sitting, I'm, this is the, this is what happens. You get on the altar and you start crying out, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You just tear and wait for God. And there's all of a sudden there's a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that He sent in the name that you're calling. So once you call it, once you're calling that name and you feel and God is moving, God is going to dwell on the inside, and you're going to feel the comforter. You're going to feel the Holy Ghost, power from God, God living and dwelling inside of you. That is the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And so, let's go to Acts 1 and 8. So when the Holy Ghost comes upon me, you know, what happens? So we're going to kind of go into like little steps here. So, Acts 1 and 8. It's just one book over. Acts 1 and 8. It says, right here, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, 
And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and all Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So you shall receive power. So a lot of people, you know, don't mistake, you know, oh, I just want to, I just want to, um, you know, call his name so I can speak in tongues. No, you need power from God. And the evidence of that the Holy Ghost has come upon you will be speaking in tongues. So you knowing that you have the Holy Ghost, the tongue, speaking in tongues will come. But your initial, I need God, I need power. I need you to fall. I need you to live inside of me. So I'm going to call your name until you show up. So last scripture for this is Luke 1 and 35. So just go back a few books. So we just passed John. No, back to Luke. Uh, Luke 1 and 35. So Luke 1 and 35. It says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. So, where's all I needed the scripture to know, where's the Holy Ghost from, come from? And the power from the highest will overshadow thee when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So God is just trying to get you to a place where it's just you and him. And when you start calling on his name, he will show up. So let's, um, so we're going to, so what happens when the Holy Ghost comes in? Um, God's dwelling inside of you. And how we know that is that we speak in tongues. So turn with me to Acts 19 and 6. So we're just kind of going back from Luke, John, Acts. It's all, they're all right next to each other in the New Testament. So Acts 19 and 6. And again, I'm going to write all these scriptures up here. Let me raise these two and write them up here for you guys. Acts 19 and 6. And it reads, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So we see literally the action that happens when you receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues. That's it. And then the scripture that we read before, it said, and, they re and you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you. So if you told us that you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power when you get the Holy Ghost. And then it says, and then they'll speak with tongues. So God, says, this whole process, while you're calling on his name, God's just filling you with his presence. God is filling you. He's, he's dwelling on the inside of you. And the evidence that you know that he's there, that he's living inside of you, is speaking in tongues. So let's also go to Acts 2 and 4. Acts chapter number 2, we're still in Acts. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, same thing. They were tearing for waiting for God. And they and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. So the tongues came. That was the evidence that they had received the Holy Ghost. They had received power. From God. And so last scripture will be 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. So just go a couple books after Acts. Go Acts and then Romans and then 1 Corinthians. And then you're going to go to chapter number 14. And verse number 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. So when we're speaking in tongues, we're not talking to our neighbor. We're not, you know, talking to our best friend. We're not talking to our family. But if we continue reading, it says, but unto God. So if we speak in an unknown tongue, we're not speaking unto men, but unto God. 
No man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So we're not, we're not sitting here having a conversation in tongues with our neighbor. This heavenly language that God has given us is him, me and him. We are communicating. That is, I know that he's on the inside of me, so I need to be, I need to talk to him and he needs to talk to me. He's trying to tell me where my life is going. He's trying to guide me. He's trying to help me. He's trying to strengthen me. And so when I talk to him, this is how I may not understand what I'm saying, but he does because he's the author and the finisher. So he's the one who wrote this entire script out. And so he knows exactly where we're headed and he needs to help us and guide us and talk to us through our journey. And so this is how, through the Holy Ghost, this is how God comforts us. That's why they call him a comforter. So with that being said, you know, the... Um, you're able to create a um, altar in your own home. So don't just believe that you can only get the Holy Ghost at church. That's not true. You can get the Holy Ghost wherever, wherever you put, wherever you lay before God. God can come in instantly. It could be at home. It could be, it could be anywhere because you have a desire to want to sit down and tarry with the Holy Ghost. You have a desire. You don't care where you're at. You just need God's spirit. So let's turn to Matthew 18 and 20. And as, we're, as you're turning to Matthew 18 and 20, I'm going to go ahead and write these other scriptures up here. So you're going to Matthew 18 and 20 and for your notes, I'm going to go ahead and give you the rest of these other scriptures. Okay, so those are the scriptures that you can write down um, for the Holy Ghost and then speaking in tongues. So, um, right now we're at Matthew chapter number 18, verse 20. Again, if you need to write them down, I pause the video and then write them down and then come back, that's totally fine. Chapter number 18. Verse 20. So let's see. Okay. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So you can call anything, you can call anything at your home. You want to call prayer, you want to call it fast. If you want to tarry for the Holy Ghost, when two or three are gathered in my name, he's going to be there. It needs to be in spirit and in truth. And if you're honest with God, and you say, God, I really, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the, and I need your power. And it says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I be in the midst. So when they had laid hands on them and they said, and they received the Holy Ghost, then that's what you need. The power of laying hands and you receive the Holy Ghost. When two or three, you tear for the Holy Ghost, someone laying your hands on you, two or three are gathered in my name. There I will be in the midst. He's there. And so while you're there, I, while you're there, it is beneficial for you to call his name while he's in the room. So not only can you receive the Holy Ghost in your house, you can call prayer in your house. And last week we talked about, you know, how to pray, what we need to do. We need to acknowledge him. We need to tell him who he is. We need to tell him what he means to us. We need to ask him what we need him to be. These are the things that we ask him in prayer. And, you know, 
Um, Matthew has given us, uh, in the book of Matthew, has given us an example. We talked about that last week. Um, but let's go to go ahead and go to First John. So not Saint John. We're going to go to First John, which is First John, which is even more in the back of the Bible. Let's see me, First John. First John, it is after Second Peter. First John, chapter number five, verses fourteen and fifteen. All right, um, let me go ahead and write these other scriptures. Oh, the the two that I just said. So it's Matthew eighteen and twenty. And then we just said First John, which you're about to read. Five, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay. So, First John, chapter number five, was fourteen and fifteen. Let me make sure that's the one I want. Okay. Yes. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So we know the will of the Father is for us to be saved. He wouldn't have came. He wouldn't have died on the cross if he didn't want to save us. And so it's his will to have us saved. So if we ask him according to his will, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. He heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that, he, that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So we can come, we can come boldly to God and ask Him if it's His if it's in His, his will for us to have, He will hear us. And if it's according to who we are, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition, we have the petition that we desire of Him. So we know, and even even in the uh, previous scriptures, I have to um, give them for you guys. It says, "If you ask anything in my I, anything in my name, I will do it." God is a faithful God that he will perform whatever his will wants us to have in our lives. So that's where, um, like I said, prayer will come in. And when we pray, in prayer, we ask him for those things. You're not asking God for uh, skateboard. You're not asking God for dolls. You're not asking God for those things. God is a God of if it's in his will, then he's going to do it. So your prayer shouldn't be about gifts or about, you know, anything like that. It should be, how can I be a better servant to God? What I maybe I need to ask for wisdom. Maybe I need to ask for knowledge. Maybe I need to ask for um I need I need to ask for a better, maybe a better uh, boldness about going to people and witnessing. So those are the things that you can go to God God for. Um so when it comes to the house of God, and I'll let you guys copy these down if you need them, then I'll erase them in a minute here. <clears throat> so when it comes to the house of God, when we're back in God's house, we have to make sure that we are obviously attentive, that we are listening to what God has to say. We are listening to the worship that's going on. We're listening to the spirit as it's moving through the house. We're listening for God and our instruction. So we can't do that you know, as young people, um, I know for a lot of young people that I know, it's the further away they are from something, the harder it is for you to hear. So if you're at school and you're in the back of the classroom, the teacher has to make sure, she has to call your name in the back and say, can you hear, can you hear me back there? Can you see back there? And you know, you say yes, even though you can't. And so maybe she'll bring you to the front of the classroom. To bring you to the front is only not to hinder you, but it's to help you, it's to help you focus, it's to help you make sure that you're paying attention, it's to help you take notes that you can see. Just the same with God's house. We want to sit as close as possible. I want to, the music, I want to hear it. I don't want to be so far away from it. I want to get close to the presence. I want to get close to the presence of God. He's all in the room. But when I hear the word, I want to be able to focus. I want it to be right in my face. So that way, when I take it back home with me, I know 
I was, I was right there when she said it. I know exactly what he said. I know exactly what she prayed. I know exactly what he spoke. You're right there engaging in service. So as young people, we need to sit closer, just like we do in school. Our, our teacher wants us to sit closer to the front of the classroom, not so far behind so she can make us, let us see. God wants you to sit, to sit closer to his, to his altar, closer to where he is. And so with that, it must come engaging in worship. So we talked about last week, um, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So we're not, you know, sitting, we're not sleeping during praise and worship. Um, we are engaging. We are thanking God because, yes, he put us out, but, you know, he had to teach us a lesson. He had to tell us what we needed to do. So when we come back into his house, it's going to be different. I'm not going to sit here like I used to. I'm not going to, you know, be you know, lazy when it comes to the presence of God, I'm going to go after it because there was a reason why this happened. And I want to make sure that when God sees me back into his house, he doesn't see the same person. He sees somebody that's striving even further before all this happened. He wants me to, he wants me to stretch out, um, like my desire for him and all those, and all those, you know, things that follow. So when he says, let everything that have breath, that is, like I said last week, it's a command. So in order to praise the Lord, I can't be sitting down there with my arms folded, you know, thinking about what are we eating after dinner? No, I'm engaging in that service because we don't know when we're going to get another one. We don't know when the next one's going to be. We don't know if we're going to ever get one again. We don't know if you're going to wrap to the church after that one service. We just don't know. So your, your service, your the feel of your service needs to be like it's your last. Like it is just... It's the last time we're congregating. You're not, we're not thinking about, oh, we're going to be here next Sunday. We just don't know because God can come at any moment. So we're not sitting on him. We're not sleeping on him. We are paying attention because he's the one that's talking. So go after God. When you when you feel those, mo those moments and you see God moving and you see God, you know, manifesting himself, and you see God just healing and delivering in his house and he's setting free his people, that is a perfect time to go after him and seek him for yourself you're not seeking him you know on for for your neighbor you're not you know you want to make sure that you are engaging in yourself and saying oh i'm only doing this because uh, my friend is doing it no you need to go after god because you have a drive to you need to pray like lord give me give me the strength Lord god that give me the wisdom give me the ear to hear that when your spirit is moving that I am attentive, that I go after everything that I can, that I lay before you and I just pray and I just cry and I just tell you everything that's wrong because I know that you care. So, and if you need prayer, you know, we have altar calls. That's a perfect time, perfect time to come to the altar and get what you need from God. As young people, whether it is from ages all the way to zero, all the way to 30 or the black team, this kind of this is for. Um, we don't be scared to that someone's gonna judge you or someone's going to, you know, say anything about you. Like this is your life. At the end of the day, are you gonna let allow someone else to hinder you from your salvation? So if we could turn to Psalms chapter number thirty-four, verse four. Psalms, chapter number 34, verse number 4. And we can see proof in the Bible about what happened when they seek when they sought after God, when they went after God while the spirit was moving. It says, we'll start at verse one. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. So I know this time is a trying time, and we're asking God that to, to have 
my praise is going to block away all fears. But he said, when I sought the Lord and he heard me, and not only did he hear me, he delivered me from those fears. So after I'm seeking him and the presence is high, and I find myself just, it's just me and him. And I just find myself seeking after him. And then all of a sudden, I know that he heard me because he said he did. And then not only did he hear me, he said, and delivered me from all my fears. So God, we know that God is a deliverer. He can hear me when I cry. He can hear me when I need his help. And not only will he hear me, he will deliver me. So let's also turn to Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. In the Old Testament, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So we know that when the presence of God is moving high, we know the Lord is in the building. We know that God is, God is healing his people. God is moving on our behalf. And while he may be found during that time, call him. Call on him while he's near. Because there will be a day where the world wished they would have called on him during the time that he was near. And they're going to miss the opportunity that the Lord has given them for years to call upon his name. And so he's asking, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So if we know the Lord is near and we know that he's in the building, we need to call upon him. So uh, make my last point here. Um, keeping, keeping yourself, when it comes to the house of God, keeping yourself um, in Bible study, keeping yourself in prayer, um, don't stop until you need, until you have everything you need from God. Don't stop until you have seeked after God. Totally don't stop until you are filled with the Holy Ghost. So if you don't have the Holy Ghost, this should be, you should be calling on him on a daily basis. Daily basis. Don't stop because seeking after God is something that we as a church long to do on a daily basis. Daily I will worship you. Daily I will uh, seek after you daily. I will pray. So keep yourself, keep yourself filled up in God. And my last point is um, that you are a servant of God. So as a church, we are to witness to our brothers and sisters um, to make sure that they know about salvation. Make sure that they know that they are aware that there is a God and who brings salvation. So as me and my you know school friends or things like that sort I should be the point person they can go to if they need prayer if um they need a you know they need a word or they need to find a scripture and i'm telling them what you know they need to do in order to be saved and then god's going to do the rest if we just plan it god will give the increase and so um we went over how we enter this house part two so if you need um part one you can definitely go back to last week and it'll be there. Um, but this is for Wednesday, um, May the 6th of Bible study. So if you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to refer to your notes or um, refer to me and I will answer them. All right, so we'll see you guys next week.